Hey, good to this. So um, I'm on yesterday's OneNote class notebook page again that says virtual learning 18th August. I'm going to change that also so it's also for the 19th. And again, we're looking at cubes again where you want to circle the numbers in a question, underline the question, box keywords, and eliminate extraneous information. So I'm going to do the same thing again here with these three examples that you can view to the left side of this page towards the bottom. These are 2D vector questions, which are then going to lead into our motion problems. But um, we have another step to do before we can really start doing true two-dimensional motion. So um, what I'm going to do again is circle the numbers and mark these problems up here and then switch to my document camera where I can show you how I would work these out on paper. So on August 7th, 2007, again, here's a date, but probably not important, right? Barry Bonds of the San Francisco Giants passed Hank Aaron to become Major League Baseball's career home run leader by hitting his 756th home run with an asterisk. That's just fun because, of course, it's been proven that he used steroids. Um, so is that really fair? If Bonds hits a baseball due west with a speed of 50 meters per second, that looks like an important number and the ball encounters a wind that blows it north at five meters per second, what is the resultant velocity of the baseball? What is the resultant velocity of the baseball? Um, so maybe wind, certainly that blows it north is kind of a key word, right? And due west, would be another keyword or important information, right? Box keywords. And um, I think from that, we have all the information we need to solve the pro rest of the problem. So, and you'll see that hopefully when I show you how I would solve this on paper, or when you look at this in the book that you've already got there. Um, the Mayton family begins a vacation trip by driving 700 kilometers west. Why am I circling not just the 700 kilometers, but also the West? Right now, at least because it's all together, that's going to be part of the number because that's going to give us the direction for a vector. Okay. And so even up here, the West and the North could be circled as being part of those numbers that follow them. Then the family drives 600 kilometers South. 300 kilometers east and 400 north. Now the units are left off this number here, but they've been used throughout the problem. So the units are implied because they should be the same as all of the other units that are quoted so far. I would prefer probably to type those out, but you will see this sometimes, okay? What's the question? Where will the maintenance end up in relation to their starting point? So where and relation to starting point, okay? And then kind of a key word for us at least is solve graphically. We'll go ahead and do it algebraically as well, but um, this one you should be able to get a pretty good estimate on. And then it doesn't matter what their family name is, right? So Ralph is mowing the backyard with a push mower that he pushes downward. Okay, so pushes is going to be a key word. Downward, add an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. So that's all giving me direction, right? And the force is also part of that number. So all of that stuff that's circled downward at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal, 20 Newtons, those are all part of the number, okay? What's the question? Well, what are the horizontal and vertical components, okay? Of the force exerted by Ralph? Does it matter that it's a lawnmower? Does it matter that it's the backyard and not the front? Nope, okay. Force could be a keyword. Um, 
just because it tells you something about the units maybe that you're looking at and that you're looking at a uh, vector as well, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the document camera and show you how I would solve these. So you always want to start out with a picture. So Barry Bonds hits a baseball due west. So on my paper, due west is gonna be going left. So due west, it's a baseball due west with a speed of 50 meters per second. Um, two, four, six, eight, 10. So let me say that every square here right now represents five meters per second and draw a straighter vector if I can. So that's 50.0 meters per second. Now velocity is a vector. And so we can add vectors, okay? So if the ball encounters a wind that blows it north at five meters per second, and again, every square on here is five meters per second, then those are the two vectors that I have to add up to determine the resultant velocity of the baseball, okay? So looking at this graphically, it should be a little bit bigger than 50. Again, let me just kind of sketch this over here real quick so that we can imagine what this should look like where it's 50 and five, and none of this is to scale over here. And so this is our triangle. This is where we want to use the Pythagorean theorem. So 50 squared plus five squared, and I should be saying 50.0 meters per second squared, 5.00 meters per second, squared equals my resultant squared, okay? Notice that when I square the 50 and I square the five, I would have meters squared per second squared. And then when I take the square root of that to solve for R, I would have um, meters per second again. And so those units would come out when you take the square root. When I add up those two squares, I get 2,525 meters squared per second squared. I would have to take the square root of that to solve for my resultant. And my resultant would be 50.2493781, et cetera, meters per second. But again, I would wanna round that because thinking about my significant figures. So all of my measurements here have three significant figures. Doing a square is really the same thing as um, multiplication. So my 2,500 would have three significant figures. My 25 at the end would have three significant figures, okay? So really when I'm looking at this now and I take the square root of it, I really only still have three significant figures that I can keep, right? Um, I didn't gain any more when I added the two squares. So when I take the square root, I should really only keep three sig figs still. So I would say this would be 50.2. And if you really wanted, you could keep one more place and it would be okay to keep a five in this case, because then if we were coming back to this and trying to round it, we would still see that that was a two. And this is meters per second. And then the question is just asking for the resultant, but while we're here, let's go ahead and review that when we're looking at this triangle and we see five and 50, that that five side is opposite my angle. And if I have my opposite and adjacent sides, then my inverse tangent of five over 50 will be equal to my angle because the tangent of the angle equals five over 50. And so you could plug that into a calculator and you would get that your angle is 5.7 degrees, okay? So I would say that the resultant would be overall, this is 50.25, meters per second, 5.7 degrees north of 
West would be how I would describe the full resultant, okay? Um, the next problem, and of course, again, it was just asking the resultant velocity. So really this is all you would need for that question, okay? The Mayton family, this says to solve it graphically. So that's one of the reasons why I've got the graph paper now, okay? So the Mayton family, begins a vacation trip by driving 700 kilometers west. So let's put them right about here. And they're gonna drive west, okay? And let's say each square represents 100 kilometers. So they're gonna drive one, two, three, four, five, six, 700 kilometers west. Draw some straighter lines. So 700 kilometers west. And then they drive 600 kilometers south. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you're thinking about this and you're thinking about how this would look on a map, if you could see where they drove, this is how it would look on a map, right? Is that all these vectors will be getting added together going from head to tail. So 600 kilometers south, and then 300 kilometers east, one, two, three kilometers east. Let me put little commas here for the directions, I guess. And then 400 kilometers north, one, two, three, four. And then the question is, what is the resultant? Well, so graphically, you would want to show what the resultant is. The resultant is going to point from the tail of the first vector that was added to the head of the last vector that was added. That's the displacement from the starting position, okay? Now you could look at this and you can see one, two, three, four over, Okay, but only two down, right? So four squared 16 plus two squared is four gives you 20. Take the square root of 20 and you're somewhere still between four and five, kind of close to halfway, but squares don't always work exactly like that. So one of the things you could do is you could measure the size of a square here. And it looks like the square here is about say, six millimeters, okay? So if every six millimeters equals 100 kilometers, six millimeters equals 100 kilometers scale, okay? Not actually like in reality. Um, so starting from one going to four, that means we've gone through say about 3.8 or 38 centimeters, 38, 3.8 centimeters, 38 millimeters. So um, this is about say what? Six and a third or 633 kilometers or so, if we're looking at it the right way, okay? Now, if you, took the, is that right? No, that's probably too much. My scale is probably off there. Um, we have the 400, and again, the lights went out. 400 is about two and a half centimeters. And this is just over two and a half centimeters. So it, I'm still getting something maybe like say 440 kilometers or so. The scale was off, I suppose. So graphically, that's what they'd be looking for you to solve for. Now, of course, algebraically we could do it, right? So the 700 minus 300 gives us the 400. The 600 down and the 400 up gives us the 200. 
So we know what the dimensions are of that triangle. Yeah, we draw it like that. Where that's 200 kilometers, that's 400 kilometers. And again, we already said that basically this was um, twenty, right? Twenty one, two, three, so twenty thousand kilometers. Yeah, four thousand, two hundred thousand kilometers squared. What's the square root of 200,000? Square root of 200,000 is 447. Or 450 kilometers based off the scale that we have here. So 440 graphically wasn't too bad of a guess, okay? Now, You'd have to be careful, I guess, when you're measuring it, if you're trying to do it graphically. And that's really why we prefer algebra, but you should be able to sketch it, no problem. Okay, so example five, Ralph is moving, Ralph is mowing the backyard, et cetera, pushes downward with a force of 20 Newtons. So here's where Ralph is, okay? I don't know why it's not really saying which direction specifically he's pushing in, but let's say he's pushing to the right, okay? And um, if that's horizontal, then downwards would be like that at 30 degrees to the horizontal, right? Now, maybe you remember from geometry, but if you have two parallel lines and a line that intersects both, What's the other angle over here? Well, according to geometry, if these two lines here are parallel, okay, then these two angles here are congruent. So that's also 30 degrees. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the components. So we're looking for how much is he pushing down compared to how much is he pushing forwards. And so we would put 20 Newtons here on that vector, okay? Now, here we are at trig and uh, the trig identities. And so remembering Sokotoa and that sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the sine of 30 degrees would be equal to my Y vector over my 20 Newtons. So how would I solve for my y vector? How would I sound solve for my downward or my vertical component? The sine of 30 degrees times 20 Newtons. So the sine of 30 is one half, right? So I have one half times 20 Newtons equals y, which means y is 10 Newtons. And even more specifically, if this is my vertical component, is this going up or down? It's going down. So because I know something about the direction, I want to go ahead and say that this is a negative 10 Newton vector, okay? Same thing for my X, except it's the cosine of 30 degrees is my X over 20 Newtons. Cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of three over two, which I am multiplying by 20 Newtons to get my X component. And I'm gonna go ahead and add hats onto these X's and Y's just to make it clear that they're vectors and also to separate it from the multiplication symbol here. And so 20 divided by two is really 10, right? So I've got 10 times the square root of three equals my x vector. So 10 times the square root of three is 17.3 Newtons. Okay, now based off of how I drew the picture, I drew this vector going to the right and down. And so this then would be a positive 
sign. Of course, we normally don't necessarily write the positives, we write the negatives, okay? So this is always gonna be called um, breaking into components, uh, horizontal and vertical or X and Y components, okay? Um, so you should be able to break a vector into components. You should be able to um, have the components that you add together to find the resultant and even find its angle when you need to, okay? Um, yeah, so I believe that covers all of those questions. If you have questions, please let me know.